count signals. Most bridge players are used to signaling to their partner in defense about whether or not they like a suit. So say for instance your partner plays the ace in a suit and you like that suit, you'll have a method with your partner to give your partner a signal about whether or not to carry on playing that suit. What many players are not so familiar with is the concept of giving count. In this flip, I'm talking about the idea of giving count when the declarer leads a suit. Normally you don't care that much about whether your partner likes your suit, or not, if the declarer is tackling it, because it looks a lot more to you like the declarer likes that suit more than your side. So, you're going to care more about how many cards your partner has in that suit than whether or not your partner actually likes that suit. When you use count, then your partner can play his or her cards in such a way as to indicate whether or not they have an even or an odd number of cards in the suit that the declarer is playing. You can normally work out how many cards that means your partner holds in a suit. You want to know whether your partner holds or 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 This is very useful for a number of reasons. Firstly, it can help your partner work out the shape of the hands. The other very useful use of count is it can let your partner know when to take a winner. So say for instance, dummy has no side entries and has this certain dummy, king, queen, jack, seven, four. If your partner has the ace, six and two, then your partner would love to know the exact right time to take her ace. She wants to take it on declarer's last card. This will be a clean, efficient break in communications. So here, the declarer leads the five. If you can let your partner know that you have three cards, then your clever partner holding those three cards can work out the declarer has two. So then your partner will know not to win the first trick, but instead the second when the communications are broken. If they won it on the first trick, that would be a disaster. The dummy would then produce four tricks for declarer. If they won on the third round, that would give away a whole extra trick unnecessarily. There are a couple of ways to give count, but the most common way is referred to as standard count. If you play your lowest card, that's an odd number. If you play a high card, then that's an even number. For example, if you had the 8742, you'd play the 8, the highest card you can afford. Your partner can work out that there's the 7, the 4 and the 2 missing, and can often work out from the bidding that your even suit must be a 4 card suit. If you had the 8, 4 and the 2, you'd play the 2, low for an odd number. Your partner will wonder whether it's a singleton or from 3 or 5, but again clues from the bidding will give him a good idea. Before I give some examples, there's a fairly important point to make, and that point is you don't have to give count. Give count if you think that it's going to be important to your partner to know the count of your suit. Don't give count if you think that it's actually going to be more useful to the declarer than your partner. If that's the case, just play any card. Here are some examples of when it's useful to give count. Here West is in four spades. North leads the ace of clubs and continues with the king, and then plays a third club which West roughs. West then draws trumps. West has already lost two tricks and can afford to lose one more, the ace of hearts. Declarer would love to be able to get rid of that pesty diamond loser in the hand on an established heart. So Declarer plays a heart to her king. North has four hearts and needs his partner to know this. His partner could well have the ace and needs to know when to take that ace. So North plays the highest card he can afford to give an even count. I've got an even number of cards, partner. From the bidding, this looks a lot like four cards. Four. <laughs> South can work out that if her partner has four and dummy has four, that means with her three, Declarer has two. So South wants to take her ace on the last heart Declarer plays from his hand. She ducks the first heart, then takes the second. Now there's no way for Declarer to get back to dummy and use that established heart and dummy to throw away the diamond loser in Declarer's hand. The contract will go down one. If South hadn't known to wait a trick and take the ace on the second heart, the contract would make. And the contract would have also made if South had waited for the third heart to take her ace. So count signals mean you can defend very cleverly. In this next example, North is in three no trumps. East leads the king of hearts. Dummy's ace of hearts wins the trick and Declarer gets to work on the clubs. West needs to give count to his partner. If his partner has the ace, she'll need to know when to take it. 
If she takes it too early, it will set up the clubs and Declara will have an entry. If she takes it too late, then it will give Declara an extra trick for no reason. So Wes plays his lowest card, the two to say, I have an odd number of cards, partner. East does the maths. East takes into account the bidding and places her partner with three clubs. That means Declara has two clubs. So that means East must take her ace on the second club. She ducks the first one, takes the second club, and communications are broken. The contract is down too. In summary, count signals can be really useful. When you're in defence and the declarer plays a suit, your partner will often want to know how many cards you hold in that suit. If you play a standard count, you play a high card for an even count and a low card for an odd count. Remember, you don't have to give count. If you think it will help the declarer more than your partner, then don't give count. <laughs> <laughs>